So thank you, Jean-Christophe and Nora. Well, you know what? I'm feeling a big pressure on my shoulders now <laughs> when I'm looking at your fabulous goals you have to achieve. So I want to share with you what I learned with accompanying, by accompanying all these groups, all these teams, because on 25 years, well, of course, we collected with my team different learnings I want to share with you. So some are good tips. And the most message for me, the most important message for me is please transpose them to your job because I don't do your job. So I guess you have to make some transposition, you know, to adapt what I want to share with you. So the, call of the, the, the title of my talk is how to engage people in storytelling. Because if we believe stories just having a nice time, it's okay. I love to have funny times with friends, but storytelling is much more than a simple good time with people, just sharing to a couple of minutes and laughing. Storytelling is more what we call a narrative, something you structure to engage people to do something. So that one, that's the I want to share uh, with you. So I have a first question for all of us. Why do we all remember of some stories we were told as kids? For me, for instance, I loved Peter Pan when I was a child. Don't ask me why, I don't know exactly why, but I can tell you the story of Peter Pan, which I won't do now because we don't have so much time to, to do it. And this starting, the simple question was a, a starting point of many researchers. And some of the prominent researchers, he's called Evan Cornog, he's an American guy, he's a teacher in the famous university, wrote a very interesting book I recommend you to read, and he created the link between story and power. He's one of the main guys who established the real link, and he said, storytellers, in fact, are leaders. And you could reverse this sentence and say, Leaders are good and famous storytellers. So you can have, of course, Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, or actually Elon Musk. And I read this book, and it was a funny part in this book. And he said, you know why? The president of a country, what is his main job? You could say he has to steer committee, he has to steer ministerials, he has to manage people to create laws, to get taxes higher, of course. In fact, his first job before getting elected is, let's build a story for the nation. Let's build a story to involve people, of course, to vote for me. And then when they get elected, like George Washington on the last time, the president has a big job too, is to reshape his story, because of course he has to face the cruel reality. And reality, is never as we expect it to be. So he reshaped it, and then when he has to leave the White House, for instance, or just the country, he has to shape a new story, to build a new story to go to posterity. So maybe the main job of a president, the essential job of a president is to build stories. So that was the starting point of different researchers, and for me, Two guys are very, very prominent, and I want to share with you what they discovered in the late 60s. It's already about 50 years ago. The first is a French guy. Yeah, <laughs> we have to be proud sometimes. He's Roland Barthes. <laughs> I, I hope you know him, of course. And the other one comes from Bulgaria. His Bulgarian researcher, Zvedan Todorov. Sorry for my accent. I cannot, uh, Bulgaria. And they build a very interesting, very interesting uh, theory, which is the first learning I want to share with you. A narrative is built on five steps. That was the conclusion after reading and studying thousands and thousands of tales, famous tales, memorable stories. So they conclude and they recap these main learnings in five steps. So let's go to the five step, please. The first step, and I want to take the example of Shrek, which is one of my best movies. I'm so sorry to tell you that I love Shrek movie. 
for me, this guy is so funny. He's living in a swamp. Do you remember? He's getting a shower with poop. That's absolutely new. I don't have that kind of shower at home. And then, of course, he's farting and during his shower. And, okay, I want to stop with that. You watch the movie, I hope. And some, some even happened. There was something weird. Do you remember of the small guy? You know, he's very tough. He's very proud of himself because he wants to seduce the most beautiful princess. She's Fiona. Do you, do you remember of Fiona? I remember very well. She's beautiful. Well, the first look. <laughs> so, Farquaad started and he took a, a, a strong decision. He said, I want to ban all these figures, all these characters out of the city because they're just messy guys. They're just creating chaos. I don't want this chaos. I want just order. I want a beautiful city, very straight. So the poor Shrek has to be to make a big battle. Maybe you remember of this part of the movie. He has to fight against the soldiers. And at the end, he's the winner. And Farquaad said, citizen of Duloc, we have our hero, his Shrek. <laughs> so Shrek has now to go for adventures and he has to find where's the, where the, the beautiful princess uh, lies. She's still uh, sleeping, as you remember. So they have to fight against the dragon. And he has helpers, a juvens. Do you remember of the donkey? He's an incredible guy. He's constantly talking and chatting, like me, but you don't know it. <laughs> and of course, there is the end for the story. And the end is Shrek gets married with Fiona. She's not as, he as she was expected to be, but they're still in love. And the donkey is in love with the dragon. So you have the five steps of a narrative. So what is the first learning for that? A story is something you can have with improvisation. A narrative is something structured. It means if you want to have a more powerful, if you want to increase your impact of people on people, you just have to build different steps and help your recipients to go through different steps. So in these main tales, in these most memorable tales, we have five steps. Maybe when you're doing a visit, you have three steps or four steps. I don't know, but just the main message is how many steps do you have in three minutes, in 30 seconds, or in 30 minutes for to, to increase the impact on your recipients? So I would say first big learning for me was, please, if you want to have a, more, more, uh, a stronger impact on your recipients, structure your message with these two simple words before and after. Why do we build five steps? It's to make your recipient move from a before situation to an after situation. Make a before and after to structure your message. If you stay focused on these two main parts, in every time, at every time you're sharing a story, you'll get a more important impact on your recipients. So let's move then to the next message. Of course, you could, told, you could tell me, that's fine, Pierre-Louis, what you're explaining. That's very fine. But you know what? We don't have that time. We're not making movies. We're not working at Pixar. Maybe it's a pity, but you're working at Servier, which is a great company, world-class company. But do you know? I have to want to share something with you. I work for these guys. They, are, they are make a crazy world-class business. So I can't tell you when they create a movie, when they create an ad, a commercial, in 30 seconds, they work days and days, sometimes months or years, just to create 30 seconds with the best, strongest impact. So sometimes we don't have that time. We have just a couple of seconds, 10 seconds. 
Ernest Hemingway, which is one of the best writers for me because I like to, to read his book, said, you can make a story in six words. And he did the famous six words story process. It still taught children in the United States. You can learn to create a story just with six words. That would be very interesting for you before a visit to say, if I have only six words to structure my story, which words would I choose? We say, if you can the minimum, you'll do it better with the maximum and not reversed. So he said, for instance, he wrote, for sale, baby shoes, never worn. Six words story, and with this six words story, you can imagine the following story. You can imagine what you wish just with six words. So this is a, a tip, this is exactly a technique. You have many books about, about that, you can find them. And, 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 and buy them and read them, can you tell your story in just six words, which is very interesting. Just do this exercise sometime. You'll see the first six word story will be a little poor. But after a couple of days, after training, you'll be much better, which is one of the tips I learned in my own and personal life. So, I chose some for you, like rain, I fell for you. <laughs> There's no message. <laughs> after you, after Jean Christophe, for instance, I can't trust anyone. <laughs> you almost convinced me I murdered Jean Christophe. And for something more poetic, one mirror, one body, thousand reflections. All these six word stories just make one thing, they open your mind. This is what we call a story, a narrative, and not simply a good time with somebody in a couple of minutes. And when you do a pitch, for instance, a business pitch, you know these words, pitching to investors. If, for instance, if you want to leave Servier one day, you have a great idea for a big business, so you need first to get money after the idea. So it's just a a tip for you. <laughs> and so you have to pitch. You have uh, 100 investors. You're on the stage like me, and I tell you, you have just two or three minutes to get the money. If it lasts an hour, people will leave. they say, sorry, I didn't understand the business. Where's the business plan? You'll get bad questions because what? Because you were not able to involve people in a short speech, a uh, short pitch, sorry. You can also do it in the elevator. You meet your boss, the elevator takes 30 seconds from the ground zero to the top of the tower, the skyscraper. So you have 30 seconds to convince him to give you an appointment for your next uh, salary to get more money, for instance. That could be a good thing. So you have just 30 seconds to reach your goal. This is a story in 30 seconds with pictures of faces, only that. Let's admire what Airbnb did just in 30 seconds to speak about a value, tolerance. That's not so easy, you know. Tolerance is something philosophical. It's not only about philosophy, it's about life. But if you want to make a long talk about tolerance, maybe people get bored after a couple of, of seconds, you know. So how to keep attention, how to catch attention with people in only 30 seconds. So after the six-word story, you have the 30 seconds. But you can also make it much longer. If you're like me, I felt totally addicted to House of Cards. You too? Okay, I have a good friend in the audience. 
five years, six seasons, 73 episodes. Isn't it something amazing? Isn't it unbelievable? Five years to stay stuck to your TV, waiting for the next episode about uh, Claire Underwood and, his, uh, hus and her husband what they do to get the power to maintain themselves, to be elected as president. It's crazy, you know, because a movie is 90 minutes. That's, that lasted five years. I hope you see that a story can also last a very, very long time. We could say it's a serial story, you know, with the different shows. And the last one I'm... I'm watching actually, even if it started in 2013. So after eight years, seven seasons, and 92 episodes, this is the record. Mad Men keeps me stuck to my TV. I'm sorry to tell you that. Why? Because this story is just incredible. It's a real disruption, you know, like in business. We speak when we are working for innovators. We speak about the disruptive uh, way of uh, breaking an industry, you know? That's a disruptive story, you know? Because there is no end. At the end of these TV shows, you can, as recipients, imagine what will follow, what will follow, what's coming next, you know? That, m that means you're playing more and more an active role in the story. This is what we call narrative, you know, compared to the simple story. You play a role in the story. That would be the same for the doctors you meet. They have to play a role in your story. That means a story is never closed. So adapt your stories to the recipient's hidden needs. Some people say, okay, I have just 10 seconds. Others. I'm okay for 10 minutes, and in other situations, we have time, you know? So, you have to adapt, but in any situation, don't forget before, after, and the five steps. Let's move to the next learning. We all want to engage people. This is the goal. I'm not here to tell a nice fairy tale. I'm not here to recap all these fairy tales. I'm just here to say, what is the main point? What is the purpose of, of telling a story? The main point is this thing, is to engage people to do something, to act. But we are sometimes under pressure, and we, should, we, we dream of, come, of get, uh, going from narrative directly to engagement. But sorry, it doesn't work. And I tried myself and I failed. You have to follow different steps, like this one. Okay, I, <laughs> I, I did it too, too quick, anyway. You have to go first to emotion. You have to stimulate emotion. And when you stimulate emotion, maybe, yeah. And when you stimulate emotions, you reached memory, memorization. And when somebody memorizes, a fact, an information, then most of the time he wants to share it and then he feels engaged. This is the way. That's the main reason why so many ancient tales are still read today after sometime 2,000 years. So, there was a, another question. This question has been asked by a famous French philosopher, Pascal, and he said, he has this question, do you engage more with convincing or persuading? Let's listen to his answer. And he said, you convince with information. I know you're full, totally full of information. You have so many to share. Diagrams, different graphs, so structures, information. But you know what? After a couple of minutes, I cannot remember of what you told me. So we need the second way of reaching people to create the engagement which is the persuasion. And to persuade somebody, we need analogies, we could say. We need stories. For instance, if you're working with Roger, Roger is suffering of Alzheimer's disease. And you could say he's losing his memory 
day after day, years after years. But you can say it in one picture, he's like a hard disk, he has no file and no byte. You'll remember much better of the analogy than of all the information. And in fact, we need both. C.S. Lewis, which is, he is the author of Chronicles of Narnia, he wrote this very interesting thing. He said, reason is a natural organ of truth, but imagination is the organ of meaning. Imagination produces new metaphors or revivify them, and it's not the cause of truth, but its condition. So to recap it, you need both conviction and persuasion. So this is my third learning I wanted to share with you. We, well, if you, as a recipient, if we're emotionally involved, we'll remember longer of a story. So, who's the hero? He told it. The hero is no more the product. The hero is not the weapon. In a, ta in a fairy tale. It's not the hero, it's an adjuvant, an auxiliary. The hero is the recipient. He's the guy who will remember your story. He's the guy who will share it. He is the hero. Of course you have stuff to sell. Of course you have uh, products, drugs to explain and to sell. Of course, but if you just do that, the memory will be very low. So. The story gets a higher efficiency if the hero, well, if the recipient can relate to the hero. That's what the showrunner Matthew Weiner, he's the showrunner of Mad Men, wrote. He said, I want to leave the show in a place where you have an idea of what it meant and how it's related to you. So as time is up, I want to finish with the last messages. Recipient is the hero, of course, and then what will be the future of storytelling, and that will be my last learning with you, for you. So, I think we're just going to a new era where all the stories will be much more interactive because of technology. So, yesterday, a storyteller was somebody on the stage, somebody in the middle of a, 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 the, the lounge, close to the fireplace, and the grandpa told stories, and all the grandchildren and the family was absolutely listening to him. That's finished. No, it's not finished. We'll have a new kind of stories. The new kind of stories, in one you'll choose if you, want, if you prefer the drama, the romance, the fantasy, and with a remote, you'll choose the story you prefer. Because of technologies, you're all using iPads. Don't forget that. You're all using computers. With these devices, you can change the structure of a story. So there will be the choose your own story structure. I just want to show you Bear Grylls, the most famous seducer, of course. And yesterday, Netflix released a new TV show. You know, it's a, a guy who's making reality show on the British TV. My adventure is up to you. We've got two options of what to do here. Either step really tentatively or crawl like a seal. You're on this journey with me. You decide. So you'll choose what you want the guy to do, whether crawl or walk. Can you imagine the breakthrough? You'll choose. So in a couple of years, your recipient will choose, they will press the button if they want that kind of, that kind of story. Let's go on. It's not finished with Bear Grylls. It's the main, main, main topic of my talk. <laughs> Hey, I hope you have to... Hey, Bergwell is calling you. Hey, his phone is on the phone. So you imagine you're sitting in your lounge, you're sitting on your couch, and Bergwell calls you to say, what do you want? Make your choice. Can you imagine the breakthrough? 
will will experience very soon. That will be the future of the storytelling. So I'm almost finished. Technology, I thought. This is the last message, Jean Christophe. Tomorrow, that means tomorrow, really, next week, efficient storytellers will have to supply multiple scenarios and not only one track story. So I hope you understood that to build a story, the structure is the first goal. Then the different steps you and the recipient go through. So to recap, where's the beef? The first is structure your stories from before to after. Story like S. Target hidden needs with the T. Optimize memorization with the O. Recipient is the hero. Store and the Y. You'll build interactive stories. So to achieve that goal, John Christophe, I have only one last message. Just train, train, train again, train often. It's up to you. <laughs>